Yeah, life in the UK does look interesting indeed, and we're sticking to that theme right now. And if you're looking for a Sunday lunch inspiration, then no doubt you're gonna find it right here on your Feel Good Breakfast Show. Now, earlier, Chef Farrell showed us how to make the UK staple fish and chips, which everybody in Mzanzi absolutely loves, and that was done with a lovely tartar. And now it's gonna be doing something a little bit different, which I know you're going to absolutely love. It's called a roast beef with bacon Brussels sprouts for a full-on British feast. Chef Farrell, how are we doing this, man? This is like a staple wool. World renowned, and uh, you've got a lot of pressure on your hands, yeah? Always, <laughs> always. <laughs> so how are we doing this? How are we starting this dish up? Okay, so what we've done is we've taken a piece of one kilo side of silver side beef. Ooh, okay, we've got a family size there, right? That's it, that's nice. it. Uh, this is a classic. They normally use silver side or top side. South Africa, they like to use sirloin, so you can pick and choose what you like. What is silver side? Silver sides, it's more on the top here. So okay. sirloin runs here, silver sides there. So it's a bit of a, it's, it's quite a tough piece of meat, so you don't okay. cut them. In South Africa, they like to cut the pieces of meat at the Sunday roast quite big. Yeah. With a silver side, you do it a little bit more thin. A lot okay. more thin, and then it's a bit more of a texture thing. It tastes quite So nice. is this something that you've been inspired from when in, uh, being in the UK? Because I imagine that your journey started quite early as a young teen moved out from Durban and then started a crazy transition from a sapphire out in UK. Mm -hmm. What was the experience like for you, and where did the cooking inspiration come from? Um, it was quite a culture shock. You know, I grew up in Durban on the beaches, and I've never seen winter before in my yeah. life. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got there. It was, it was quite tough for a year to get uh, acclimatized, but after a while, it's, it's, it was really epic. I mean, it taught me a really good trade. So after you got all the shivering done, you could actually get in the kitchen and make some magic. Yes, it was so warmer there. What are some of the staples and some of the favorites that you see in the UK that uh, you've kind of brought back to SA? Just anything like that stands out for you in the style of cooking, things that they love making quite often, or any traditional dishes for you? I like doing what, what they taught me in England was, it is what it is, but what is it not? It so, is what it is, but what is it not? Okay, I so, like that. So like you can take you can take a Sunday roast, but now you can change that dish into something a bit more classic or a bit more refined. So take those those set ingredients, but then turn it on its head into whatever you want it to be. All right, well let's turn something on its head right okay, now. Okay, so what we've done so far, <laughs> we've just sealed off the beef. Okay, so for a kilo piece of beef, you cook for 20 minutes to medium rare, plus an extra 20 minutes cooking time. Okay. And that gets it to medium rare perfectly. So that's so something this side, especially because I would hate to ruin something so beautiful, especially for the whole family. And I think exactly. this is a big pressure moment, getting that medium rare to actually become medium rare. So exactly. you say 20 minutes on? Per kilo. Per kilo. Oh, so so okay, say you've got a, a two, uh, two kilo piece of meat, so it'll be 40 minutes plus an extra 40 minutes. I love that. That's a brilliant tip. Thank so you. That's, and that's medium rare every single time. Okay. Okay, right, so, so what we'll do is, what you would do with this, you would grab all your... We've got our veg. Vegetables. Right, yeah. So we've got some carrots going so in there. What's this onion. called is a, is a trivet. A trivet. Okay, so what you're doing is, you don't want the meat to touch the pan that goes into the oven, because then you're going to have one solid piece there. So what you want, you want to lift it off the... Oh, I got you. So we're elevating this thing yes. so that it's not, it's, it's not basically touching all sides of the dish. Correct. It's kind of like suspended. Exactly. What's the reason for that exactly? So you don't want the metal, another piece of metal, touching the beef. So you're going to have one solid piece of, of overcooked meat oh, and then you'll have wow. nice beef on top. Two killer tips already coming through here. I've got 20 minutes per kg and then this little thing that I've never ever heard of or seen before, but I'm absolutely loving so the idea of it. So we go just like that. And uh, we call it a trivet, eh? It's really a trivet. A trivet. The first time I've seen this, Mzanzi, maybe it's the first time for you as well, but uh, Chef Farrell, he knows how to deliver. So this would go in the oven just like so. Uh, so this would be 40 minutes and then let it rest for about 10 to 15 minutes and then slice to go. Okay, and I'd imagine some of the, the, the veg and stuff also gonna start infusing in this dish. Definitely, so what you would normally do with this, it's called panju. So once that's finished and you're ready to take that out, you take these vegetables and you add red wine to that. Ooh, and then you've got to start with your, your nice. panju sauce. We are doing something fancy today, man. I need to take notes because if I made this for the fam, they are gonna be well impressed. I'm loving this. So you're moving over to, um, Brussels sprouts? Brussels sprouts. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do is Brussels sprouts are quite a lean vegetable. Uh, they are tasty, but you need to add a bit more flavor to it. To give yeah, it some there's love. A, lot, yeah, a lot of issues with people not knowing how to prepare Brussels sprouts correctly, so they rather just don't even prepare it they at all. They don't even do it. So they, there's two ways to do it. I like to do it very quickly like this, so it's a quick saute in a pan. Okay. Or well, this other way to do it is you, do, you put a little knife nick at the bottom there, and you blanch for about five minutes. So that helps it cook and it get through there. And then you've got a whole right. cooked piece. So that's kind of just opening it up, right? That's it, okay. that's it. Okay, gotcha. so we're gonna start pan frying our uh, Brussels sprouts and bacon. So let's go bacon first. Always with the bacon first, of course. Who so what you, wanna no do is, <laughs> what you wanna do is render the bacon fat. Okay. So just a little bit will do. Get it nice and hot. Now we're cooking. When you hear that sizzle, when you got that smell, the kitchen is live. <laughs> 
So this is something you'd infuse with the Brussels sprouts, I'd it's imagine? Very nice for a little bit of a, so the, the why this works so great is that it's a lean vegetable with fat content and that gives it a balance and it works so well. Beautiful. So you're just gonna get a little bit of color in this. Once you see a little bit of browning, take your Brussels sprouts. So I'm like just staring in silence here, my jaw's dropping, because I'm getting the smells, I'm seeing how beautiful these colors are coming together, and I'm seeing how awesome this is gonna add to the beautiful part of this dish. But if we could talk through the last steps of this Chef Farrell and fast forward into time to get to that beautiful dish, what are the steps that we'd be missing out on before we get to that point? The steps we're missing out, once we're done with the bacon, once we're done with the Brussels sprouts, we've got this in the oven, yeah. uh, it's preparing. How long till we get to that beautiful dish over there? Oh, it's no more than, I would say an hour you can get this out in a okay. day. So it's not a, a hard, hard dish to do. And then it's served quite nicely with, so you would serve this, Yorkshire puddings, roast potatoes, and a set of gravy, and you sort of ready oh, to go. Oh, man. Well, we're going to carry on cooking this beautiful dish because I want to get to the bottom of it. But you can find this recipe on expressoshow.com, and Chef Farrell is giving us all the UK inspiration you need. And if you do this meal, the parents, the family, the loved ones are going to love you. So you got it here first, expressoshow.com. Don't forget all these beautiful tips as well. And the rest is for you to enjoy. Yeah, I'm going to go over there and try that. Okay, go for it. <laughs>